Welcome back. Muspa recently just came out. A new boss that drops some new best and slot items and good overall drops. Like Vorkath, but a bit better. I got the pet along the way. The first in over a year while getting enough ancient essence to make the saturated heart. A really nice magic upgrade overall. Now we have to get the Venator Bow. It's a complicated weapon that works in non-traditional ways. But once we get this bad boy, you will see how to maximize this bow's mobbing abilities, as I have plans for it, of course, for my account. You need 5 Venator Shards to make this bow, and a 1 in 100 drop rate each. And we're starting off this video with 0 shards in about 300 kills. So, a bit of a rough start. Oh, I got my first shard! Let's go! Nice. Only took exactly 3 times dry. Wow. Well, we got the first shard at 300 KC. We did complete the log on here because uh, the pet being the hardest, we got that early. So Back when I grinded it on average. Oh, another shard. Let's go. Venator shard. Two in one day. Hell yeah. All right. Two out of five. I'm glad I decided to do a, a bit more today. Hell yeah. It was worth Oh, yes, another shard. Oh my god, three in one day. Nice, we're almost to the average. Three in 400, basically, yes. Since the last video, Muspa boss drops the resources has been reduced just slightly. And honestly, I barely even noticed the difference since killing Muspa in this prize video. And according to the wiki, every kill is worth around 230k or a bit more. Which is absolutely nuts, because if you compare it to something like Vorkath, which is 130k, this boss is actually 100k more per kill. I can do about 30 Vorkaths an hour, which is about 4 mil per hour, right? But I only have to do this boss 20 times an hour to get around the same profit, and I believe I can actually do a bit more than that. I can probably do like 25 kills an hour, so it's probably around like at least 5 mil per hour or something like that. And this, of course, doesn't include costs, but you get the idea. It's actually quite a lot better if you can actually kill this boss. Just a little bit slower than Vorkath. But this PSA is more for those of you guys that are trying to kill this boss for money. As for me, the resources are still amazing. This boss is a mixture of Vorkath and Zora drops, where Zora drops a lot of seeds and herbs, and Vorkath drops a lot of Alks. This boss drops a bit of both. Alright, we just hit 400kc, so... Estimated completion for the bow is like around 500, but uh, yeah, I don't even mind if it's like a thousand at this point. So there's this groundbreaking strategy where you can take zero damage on the melee phase without having to freeze the boss, which is amazing. I guess the community just called it like the flinch or step back method. It's really simple. When the melee form is about to attack you, just move two tiles away from it, and then once it reaches you and hits you, if you have Prey Melee on, you'll take zero damage. So every time it's about to hit you, just move two tiles away and you'll take no damage. Initially, it was patched because Jagus didn't intend it, but then they actually brought it back because they decided it was more of a skill thing. So, hey, we have it now. But yeah, definitely do this method. It's not that hard to learn at all. And it just makes this boss so much easier. No more having to worry about freezing. Trust me, you want to be on RCS spellbook anyways. It is so much better. You get thralls and greater corruption and the death charge is so nice so definitely do this method you might also be wondering what happens if the muspa boss transitions from range to melee and it's super far away from you so in this case the flinching will still work you just have to stand still where you are and let it come to you and on that very first hit that it will reach you it will be a zero if you pray melee and then afterwards just move two tiles away from it every time it's about to attack you and it'll work lastly one other tip i want to tell you guys is the safe spot for the cloud phase where the boss teleports around like crazy so that tile that i marked where i'm standing if there are no moving spikes you can just stand there and you can pretty much hit the boss from there from any side that it teleports to and also dodge all the clouds it's really nice look at how wacky my shadows attack is trying to chase muspa as it teleports so for the last phase of muspa with the prayer shield a lot of people were thinking you need a zarya crossbow to do this phase well and in reality you actually don't because the sapphire dragon bolts 
special attack actually happens really often on this boss. So something as cheap as a Dragon Crossbow or an Armadillo Crossbow will work absolutely fine. Oh, new PB. Let's go. <laughs> oh my god, I finished, I finished it. Oh my god. Holy shit, that's actually crazy. I actually finished it. Wow, right before the drop rate. Okay, this is my spoon boss. All right, I think we are done. We might have to come back for essence, but I don't think I'll I'll use enough essence to worry about that. But I think we are officially, at least for a very, very long time, done with uh, the good old Muspa here. 459 kills. Yeah, at least we did a decent amount. I'm excited to show you how good this bow can be, especially at Slayer, because I'm pretty damn sure Slayer is going to be much, much better with this bow. You wish to use five Venator shards to create a Venator bow. This process is non-reversible. Yeah, of course. All right, so I also need to charge this bow, right? Ah, yeah, that's one of the annoying things about this bow. We actually need to charge it with essence. I do have 183k, so I think it'll last quite a long time, maybe? Honestly, I'm not sure, man. Holy crap, full charge took about a third of my, my essence, so... So I will try to track the essence use throughout my Slayer experiment so I can just see what kind of expectations in terms of the cost I'll need for you guys and for myself. Yeah, we need to talk about how this bow works because it's such a weird weapon, so sit down and hear me out. The Venator bow at initial glance is nothing special because its base max hit is not that high for a whip speed weapon. But its attack can bounce twice for 66% each of its maximum hit. So one shot of this bow can technically hit three times in a multi-area where there are enemies that are close to each other for a theoretical total of 232% damage. So if my max hit with this bow is a 42, then its true max can actually be around a 98, which no other range or melee weapon will come close to. Only ancient magics or chins can do better, but the mobs have to all be right next to each other for those other two to work. The Venator bow can bounce targets that are few spaces away. They don't have to be next to each other, which covers situations that Chins and Ancient Magics cannot, like Dagnos or Blood Fells under normal situations. But what I'm saying is this is an amazing weapon for killing regular mobs. I went to a ton of different places where this bow would shine and here's the results. First, let's just talk about the bad news. So this bow is not a weapon for bossing because its base max hit of 38 off task, 42 on task, is just so much lower than other competitive ranged weapons like the Bofa, which can hit way higher than it for the same attack speed. The Venator bow's bouncing ability also doesn't work like Chins, so it wouldn't be good at places like Armadale. Chins, for example, roll accuracy on every enemy it hits, based on the initial target, so throwing a chin at the armor minion, which is low defense, will bypass the high defense of the armadillo boss, making it super good at armor. But the Venator bow's bounce hits roll individually on each target, so it wouldn't count the minion, it would just roll off the boss's defense and you would probably miss a lot. And even if this bow worked like chins and ignores defense, kind of, it won't really work the way that Chins can because it's hard to control where it bounces. It could literally just bounce between two mains the whole time. And also the bounce hits only 66% of the damage, so you can only hit like 20s anyways. So it's not that good. Chins can hit 20s and it's faster attack speed. And it doesn't bounce well on large 3x3 creatures like Black Demons or Grey Demons, which is honestly silly. I don't know why Jagex didn't do this. Maybe they just, you know, engine work or whatever. It is time to get to the good news. There is a lot of good uses with the Venator Bow. So for which type of players and what type of situations is the Venator Bow best at? This bow benefits players who are 1. Training range through Slayer or Nightmare Zone. 2. Trying to gain faster Slayer XP or finish some tasks quicker. And 3. People who want to AFK more Slayer tasks. The bow is extremely good for training range, and it's basically the best out there unless you are chinning at like the monkeys, which is incredibly expensive and also doesn't get you any Slayer XP. The Venator bow will provide the highest range XP per hour on many multi-combat Slayer tasks. 
The bow is extremely good for training range and slayer together because there are a lot of tasks where it is multi, but you cannot use ancient magics to mob them, such as the Sukwa tasks, fire giants, blood veils if there's no notes involved, dagonauts, and quite a few more. I also used it at regular aviancies, and it's actually really good there. If you just watch this clip, that spot is amazing. If for every reason you don't want to kill the armor boss. Venator Bow with a cannon works extremely well. There are a bunch of tasks like Sukwas, Ice Trolls, Dagonauts, and again, Blood Vills. The craziest range XP slash their XP I managed to get was at Mutated Blood Vills with the cannon and the Venator Bow, getting me almost 100k slayer XP an hour and over 200k range XP an hour. Remember, these are with almost max setup, so it will be a bit less of using lesser tier gear but still should be the best range XP on multi slayer tasks and to a lesser extent the best slayer XP on certain tasks. Also it's good for tasks where you normally use ancient magics. It's not going to be nearly as fast as barraging them but if you're looking for range XP those tasks will do wonders. And if you are just feeling lazy but you still want to get some slayer done for whatever reason the Venator Bow is really good for AFKing a lot of tasks because of the bouncing ability to keep the mobs aggressive. Bring some pea pots or extra healing with you though. Anyways, I compiled a nice list of tasks that the Venator Bow is good at, showing you the possible XP rates for both range and slayer XP. All listed are worth doing with the Venator Bow and there might be some other places I missed out on but I think I have a majority of them. But as you can see, the best slayer rates come from Mutated Blood Vells and Diagonals. Most tasks on this list are easily over 150k range XP an hour and probably around the 40k Slayer XP per hour, which is well over any other range options for Slayer. Also, it's decent for some Wilderness Slayer tasks like Chaos Druids, Spiders, and Scorpions. The bow does use Ancient Essence charges. I estimated most tasks will use around 500 to 1000 charges. And lastly, if you're not going to use the bow at slayer you should use it at nightmare zone for range training it's definitely going to be the best range xp an hour there over anything the blowpipe etc will not come close you should be able to get like anywhere over 100 to 150k range xp an hour maybe even more it depends on how sweaty you go like do you use rigor and things like that personally for me the venator bow will be super useful as I can speed up certain tasks like Sukwas and Kelfight workers so I can get the tasks I want faster and AFK some tasks. I'm really happy with this Venator Bow. It's definitely really useful for someone like me who is doing a lot of Slayer in the long run for pet hunting, uh, rare items, and collection lot related stuff. You'll definitely see more of the Venator Bow in future progress videos. And as always, there will be some nice side progress featuring some collection log involving clues and other miscellaneous grinds. Oh, Takarsa, ah, that, Tots Kit Cell, hell yeah, the shield, oh my god. On memories of grinding these guys and AFKing for money back in the, the days of old school release. Yay, while testing the new bow, uh-huh. Yeah, Tazar's looking really good, though. Well, we're almost done with the task, and we are comfortably floating at 50k an hour. Hell yeah, we got one, whoa, what? We got a wooden shield, G. Imagine Kid Me had this though. Holy crap. I would have felt like an absolute baller. I gotta redo them all. Oh, yep, there it is. One log a day keeps depression away or something. Jeez, there's still so many to refill. Are too many good drops. I can't hit this guy? I can't can I even blowpipe? Okay, I can blowpipe at least. Oh, we got a pink boater. I mean purple boater. Nice. Very nice. The rest of the caskets were just junk. And to wrap up the video, let's talk about the final loot from basically completing Muspa. 455 kills, so that's pretty lucky because of course the pet is like 1 in 2500. So if not the pet though, it was pretty average drops wise. So we got 327k essence, lots of dragon armor, lots of dragon bolts, lots of good seats. Most of these are snapdragons I believe and ranars. But yeah, mixture of alcohols and resources here. Definitely a fusion of Warcraft and Zora. But yeah, 102 mil uh, from 455 kills. So that's uh, easily over 200k a kill on average. It's actually that insane. 
That is actually crazy, but I really do like the Toe Flax though. Toe Flax herbs 1.3k. That's probably like the highlight resource for me. And also the cannonballs too. Of course, the five Venator shards. For real though, that's pretty much it on the loot. But yeah, it's exceptional. Exceptional loot. Definitely a great boss for making money if you are willing to learn this boss. Very consistent. Guaranteed profit.